Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Friends, most of our audience is focused on CRISPR therapeutics. Many are fans of CRISPR therapeutics. Many have invested a lot of money in CRISPR. And there are many who are planning to put money into CRISPR or thinking about when to take profits. This video is for you. Today I want to share with you some information that will make you feel bullish about CRISPR therapeutics. That said, let's get started. Welcome back friends. Today I want to share with you the results of my investigations into CAR-T therapy market and why I think CRISPR therapeutics is going to be a mega catalyst uh, with its CTX112 anti-CD19 allogenic CAR-T therapy. There is of course a risk factor that we should watch out for as the company releases trial data on CTX112. Interested? Keep listening till the end and you'll understand this whole thing much better. First, let's start with the appetizer. How much money did CD19 and BCMA targeting therapies, CAR-T therapies, bring in during the entire 2023? Well, the answer is 3.6 billion US dollars distributed between six companies. I'll share details later in this video uh, breakup. Uh, if we look at just the CD19 autologous CAR-T sales volume in 2023, it was approximately $2.7 billion. Now let us look at the details. The top revenue earner in CAR T cell therapy for 2013 is Gilead's Yescarta with a revenue of 1.5 billion US dollars. Following closely behind is Johnson & Johnson's Karvitki with revenue reaching 500 million US dollars. Novartis Chimera is estimated to have bought in 500 million US dollars in 2023. This is my estimate because uh, the breakup was not available. I searched a lot, but I couldn't get a breakup. So I have kept it slightly below what it did in 2023, uh, 2022, so that uh, I'm thinking that there'll be a drop in the sales volume of Chimera. That's a very conservative estimate. And then Bristol Mayor Squibb has two entries in the list, Abecma with 358 million US dollars and Brayanzi with 364 million US dollars. Gilead also appears with Tecartes generating 370 million US dollars in sale. So in total, the CAR-T cell therapy market reached a combined revenue of 3.592 billion US dollars in 2023. This despite the FDA warnings. I'll explain the FDA warnings in a bit so that you can appreciate how CRSP or CRISPR therapeutics may win this arms race against cancer. Now that you have all the details, let us turn our attention to CTX112, which is the next generation allogenic CD19 CAR-T therapy from CRISPR therapeutics. CTX112 is a new and promising type of CAR-T cell therapies being developed by uh, CRISPR therapeutics to fight B-cell malignancies, which is basically cancer of the immune system. Here's a breakdown of the key uh, points. CTX112 is designed to be more effective or potent at killing cancer cells compared to previous CAR T cell therapies. It also brings uh, with it uh, signs of uh, being easier to manufacture in larger quantities. Benefits of CTX112 is that because of its potency and ability to resist signals that normally shut down CAR T cells, um, CTX112 is expected to persist longer at the tumor site, continuing to kill cancer cells for a longer duration compared to other similar therapies, which means reduced fatigue and longer persistence. The effectiveness and safety of CTX112 are currently being evaluated in clinical trials for B-cell malignancies. Overall, CTX112 is a promising new CAR T-cell therapy with the potential to be, the more, uh, to be even more effective and longer lasting than the previous versions of the same therapy. Now for the risk part for CTX112. There is a surface molecule uh, called class 1 MHC. These are specific to the individuals in their CAR T cells. In autologous therapies, there is no worry because the T cells come from the patient and hence the class 1 MHC is identical. When it comes to an allogenic CAR T therapy, the donor class 1 MHC will be different and as soon as it is infused into the patient, there will be a conflict as the patient's body will consider it as foreign and attack it basically because of the class 1 MHC which is different in the donor cell as compared to the host cell. Think of it this way. Class 1 MHC molecules act like a security tag on nearly all cells in your body. They are constantly produced and displayed on the cell surface. Here's a breakdown of the function in a healthy situation. 
class 1 mhc molecules are assembled inside the cell using snippets of protein that were originally made within the cell itself these snippets are called peptides the mhc molecules with its uh, bound peptide fragments acts like a unique identifier for that specific cell immune systems t cells constantly patrol the body checking these mhc tags on every cell they encounter if a t cell encounters a cell displaying a foreign mhc molecule with a peptide fragment from a virus or bacteria for example the t cell recognizes it as a potential threat this recognition triggers an immune response the t cell activates and eliminates the infected or abnormal cell by constantly displaying self peptides on the class 1 mhc molecules healthy cells can be identified by the immune system as friendly and avoided uh, and not killed uh, this helps the immune system differentiate between healthy body cells and those infected with virus bacteria or even cancerous cells so let's understand why ctx112 ends up without class 1 mhc The class 1 MHC is disrupted on CTX112 cells but not for the primary purpose of avoiding GVHD. Here is the breakdown. Disrupting the TRAC locus which leads to the lack of class 1 MHC is done for two reasons. The primary reason is to allow for the allow for the CAR transgene integration. This appears to be the primary reason for TRAC disruption. CAR T cell therapies involve genetically modifying T cells with a new receptor or CAR to target cancer cells disrupting TRAC might create space for the CAR transgene to integrate into the T cell genome so while the lack of class 1 MHC does help prevent graft versus host disease or GVHD it's likely an indirect consequence of the main goal which is to allow for successful CAR integration now this is where we encounter a risk while um, uh, T cells are looking for the Uh, class 1 mhc uh, 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 tag and uh, identifying it as uh, self and avoiding uh, killing it the absence of uh, class 1 mhc um, is something that makes the cell invisible to the cd4 t cells so uh, ctx112 will become invisible to the cd4 t cells of the patient uh, therefore it will avoid getting killed by cd4 t cell however uh, lack of mhc class 1 mhc makes it susceptible to natural killer cell or nk cells the lack of class 1 mhc molecule on its surface means natural killer cells will identify this as a cell which has to be killed because there is something abnormal with the cell and um, one of the uh, things that i have found in all the studies that i have done with regard to ctx1112 Uh, is that some of the scientists believe that nk cell risk is very minimal for ctx112 because they are typically scarce and not very active in the area surrounding the tumor because the tumors uh, generate uh, chemicals uh, which subdue natural killer cells so ultimately i think clinical trials will determine the effectiveness of this approach in balancing the benefits of ctx112 with potential nk cell rejection so we'll see what happens so we have to be very very focused on this aspect when we look at data releases from crispr therapeutics for uh, ctx112 well now let us zoom out of the rabbit hole and take a look at the big picture if you look at current uh, cd19 uh, autologous uh, uh, car t therapies they earn close to 2.7 billion they have a problem that has been flagged by fda and known to patients the problem is malignant car t cells so uh, one of the reasons i think it is happening is because uh, in autologous uh, uh, autologous car t cell therapy uh, the cd4 uh, t cells are extracted from the patient and since the patient already has a tendency to malignancy in the cells there's a good chance that the car t cell itself is unstable right now there i don't think there is any quality control test being performed to make sure that the cd4 t cell is not unstable or is uh, to make sure that it's not prone to malignancy maybe if all these um, autologous cd4 t cells add an extra uh, autolo- autologous uh, cd4 therapies start adding an extra quality control step uh, if it's possible uh, to um, uh, to check whether any of those cd4 t cells are already malignant before processing or are unstable or and are likely to be malignant Uh, if any modification is made to them 
then that quality control step will help them to um, get rid of the FDA uh, black box label uh, and um, uh, make it much more popular with the patients. However, in the absence of that, if CTX112 gets approved, CTX112 being a uh, allogenic uh, therapy, uh, the CD40 cells are coming from very healthy individuals. They are going to be very robust uh, and they are going to provide robust action within the body. And because they do not have the class 1 MHC, they are going to survive uh, any attack from the CD4 T cell because CD4 T cells will not be able to see CTX112 due to lack of uh, class 1 MHC molecules on the surface. And as a result of this, I think uh, CTX112 could become a blockbuster drug uh, because uh, the patients, when they look at the other therapies for CD19 uh, CAR T, uh, they are going to look at the black box label from FDA and uh, when they look at uh, uh, CRISPR therapeutics, uh, it's going to be looking way better because it is autologous. There is no lead time between uh, the requirement by the patient and the pro product being available. There is no um, uh, removal of blood and processing it and all the wait time is gone. Uh, there is no overheads out there. So it's going to be, CRISPR therapeutics is going to be much more uh, attractive with its CTX112 offering for CD19 uh, targeting uh, therapies. Now, the other bonus is that CTX112 is not only targeting oncology, but also targeting lupus, which is a separate market. There are two separate trials and uh, the odds of one of them succeeding uh, should be better than having trials just for a single indication for CTX112. So that's another positive. Now let us look at the at a few market size projection for CAR T cell therapy. Uh, here is the first estimate that I came across. Uh, it talks about the overall CAR T cell therapy market, and uh, it's very close to the ballpark in 2004 with uh, 3.9 billion dollars uh, as overall uh, CAR T market for the whole uh, world, and um, sorry for Europe and uh, in the United States. But if you uh, keep looking at the progression, it's a rather robust progression with a 20% uh, compounded annual growth rate between 2024 to 2035, ultimately culminating in a value of 25 billion US dollars in 2035. So this is one of the things that I found out. Here is uh, another um, market estimate that I found out. Uh, and it talks about 2023 being in the ballpark of 2.81 uh, billion. And uh, these are all US dollars. And this is for entire CAR T cell. It does not differentiate between CD19 or BCMA or CD70. This is all CAR T cell market. And this talks about 2033 being in the range of 22.91 billion. Uh, and if we look at this third um, uh, estimate, which is coming from Polaris Market Research, um, it doesn't give us the exact numbers, it's just uh, showing um, the bar size and it says that um, the CD19 slash CD22, it's got a breakup out there, it says that the CD19 slash CD22 forms the bulk of uh, US CAR T cell therapy as of 2032 and even now and going forward it's going to be the biggest component. So CD19 and CD22 uh, targeting um, CAR T cell therapy is going to the going to be the biggest one with almost 90% uh, to 95% of the market share, and BCMA is going to come in close second with around three to five percent, and the others um, which are going to target various assorted um, uh, targets, they are all very minuscule, maybe uh, one percent or something like that. That's what uh, this chart tells me. So if we take it all in. And if you look at the bigger picture, uh, I think that uh, CRISPR therapeutics has got a uh, really good um, opportunity uh, to become a, a big blue chip because, first of all, we have to re recognize that CTX112 uh, is a wholly owned um, uh, therapy of CRISPR therapeutics, so uh, they don't have to share the profits with anyone. And um, that's going to be huge because that can be a huge windfall for CRISPR therapeutics. You're looking at 2.7 billion market size right now as of 2023. And it's only going to increase with every year. And if CRISPR is going to get an opportunity, CRISPR therapeutics is going to get an opportunity to uh, attack this market. Uh, it can take a huge share of it. It's only going to be a question of how fast they can manufacture the therapy uh, so that they can uh, meet the demand. 
Uh, that's the way I'm looking at it. And of course, guys, you know that I'm a retail investor like yourself, uh, but I'm just investing more time in looking into these things. So now my ask from you is please let me know uh, what you guys think of this analysis and how does it fit with your own understanding of this product in CRISPR pipeline? I mean, if you have uh, put time to look into CTX112, please let me know it in the comments. I would also like to know how many of you still hold CRISPR therapeutics uh, stock and um, uh, what what are your thoughts about CRISPR therapeutics, especially with regard to CTX112. And full disclosure, I bought... Um, uh, CRISPR Therapeutics earlier this week and immediately sold it off when the price went down a little bit. Of course, I didn't make a loss, but I made a very thin profit. But that money is back into FNGU and it's making good money out there. Uh, I'll move it back into CRISPR Therapeutics. And as I mentioned, my target price is between 55 and uh, $60 for entering into CRISPR Therapeutics. If I find anything below 55, I'd definitely be happy to jump into it. One of the main things that I have realized over the years is that it's not important how convinced I am about a company and how much I think a company uh, share price should be worth. Um, it, it, it's more dependent on what the market sees, is, sees it like. So when it comes to uh, gene therapy companies like uh, CRISPR Therapeutics, Beam, uh, um, Caribou Biosciences and all these companies, the fact remains that a huge portion of the market is not even looking at this segment at this point of time. So that's the biggest problem. And the second thing is that those who are looking at it, most of them are looking at CRISPR therapeutics and not at the other companies. So CRISPR gets a little bit of advantage out there, but still CRISPR has not, CRISPR therapeutics has not uh, gained the full potential in terms of getting attention from the entire stock market. That has not happened yet. But if CTX112 succeeds, the news will go far and wide and then suddenly you will see a lot of interest from people who have never looked at CRISPR therapeutics before and that's what pushes up the momentum and the RSI and that's what makes the share price go uh, to the moon as they say. So that's what I'm hoping for friends. I'd like to end this video with this here. Please let me know your feedback in the comment section. And by the way, if you have not yet subscribed, please smash the subscribe button and become a subscriber and also press the notify button so that you do not miss any other uh, videos in future. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.